Tom the Treasurer got up that morning to get the parish accounts ready for the evening's PCC. First though, he remembered to thank God for helping his parish make a really good effort in pledging its full common fund amount for 2015. Soon the accounts were all in order and ready for his update to the PCC. The PCC was encouraged that the congregation was giving enough to keep the parish running and to fulfil its promise to Common Fund to help support others in the diocesan family. The vicar reminded them from the chair of Jesus' words, Give and it will be given to you. The diocesan family extends across the whole of South Yorkshire, from Penniston at the end of the Woodhead Pass across to Goole in the East Riding, and from the edge of Barnsley in the north to the borders of Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire in the south. It's a richly diverse community, all part of God's wonderful family. Some parishes serve large urban areas, and some serve small rural communities. Some are affluent, many are quite deprived. The diocese is home to 1.2 million people. Over 170 parishes and over 200 churches seek to share the good news of Jesus with as many of these people as possible. We employ almost 140 paid clergy, supported by many other self-supporting and retired clergy, about 200 licensed readers and an army of lay volunteers. Some lay leaders have received formal training in children's work, evangelism or worship leading through the diocesan lay training scheme. Most have received no formal training, but gladly offer their gifts and abilities in the many ministries of the church. It is a big operation. In addition, well over 8,000 children are educated in our 40 church schools and academies. We are all part of something much bigger than just our own individual parish. It's good to know that together we can make a real difference for God in our generation and support each other as we seek to fulfil the diocesan vision of growing lively, sustainable churches in every place. Common Fund is the mechanism by which we all share together as one diocesan family. Every parish and benefice gives and each receives. In response to our request for 2015, over half our benefices pledged at or around the suggested sum. Almost a quarter exceeded this, on average by 16%. Almost a quarter pledged an average of 22% below the request. For 2016, it will be assumed that each pledge for 2015 will be the accepted baseline for everyone, so that we can begin to grow from this point onwards. Here at Sprotborough, we, um, we're a medieval church in a village, an extended village, three miles from Doncaster. We have a mixed range of, of ages, but mostly older people, older professional people, with an average attendance on a Sunday of about 60 to 65 people. Sprotborough has upped its pledge for 2015. Despite being an interregnum, we feel it's very important that we should all share the work of, of the diocese. We're very lucky in Sprotborough that we have plenty of help and plenty of people who will respond to fundraising and giving. People here are generous. I don't know why. I think we all need to respond to God's call to realise that other people are not quite as well off as perhaps we are. I think people respond to being asked to be generous. I think the wider community loves the church in Sprotborough. I think they love the building, it's in the centre of the village, they feel it's part of their village, it's part of them, and they respond to that and want to be generous. Our plans for the future are a bit undecided at the moment because we have no incumbent. But at the moment we are carrying on um, with our worship, we have lots of lay help, we can continue with our fellowship groups, our Bible study groups, and we want eventually to do a lot more work with youth and we shall need an incumbent to lead us in that, we, th we feel. We are an elderly congregation uh, and we would dearly love to bring some uh, young families and children into the church and we're hoping that a new incumbent will inspire us. We do have a lot of volunteers with the church, especially from the readers and um, just in general people are very, very willing to help us uh, as regards to the uh, the crib services over Christmas, Christmas Eve. We had 700 
people come to share their crib services with us on Christmas Eve and they, um, we couldn't have done it without a lot of help and um, they all uh, helped out with everything that we had to do and we even had to turn people away because the church was so full. And this is a, a good example of how strong the community is in Sprotborough and we all appreciate everything that everyone does for us. Tom the Treasurer explained to the PCC how Common Fund works in practice. Line A is the actual ministry plus support costs for your benefits. Line B is the amount reckoned to most of our parishes from the church commissioners based on local deprivation factors. Line C is what your parish or group of parishes pledged for their 2015 Common Fund contribution plus an adjustment for inflation. The bottom line, D, shows any shortfall which your sister parishes in the diocese have to make up for you in 2015. For some, however, this bottom line will reveal that a parish gave more into common fund than it received. For this, we are most grateful both to God and to them. We now ask every benefice to tell us what they can offer using line C as a minimum and aiming to reduce line D if there is a negative difference. So St Polycarp's Maiden Bridge is a net receiving parish and we're a parish of, we've got an electoral roll of, of about 80 and um, a real mixed economy area. So some private housing and social housing, a housing estate, um, a number of schools in the area and a number of people within the congregation who are teachers or connected into education. So that's one of the things that we're really passionate about doing is connecting into schools. The average weekly attendance is between 60 and, and 70 on an average week, but can be sometimes higher than that. So in an average week, we have uh, Polytots, which is a toddler group, and we have Polly's People, which is an over 55s club. We have youth clubs, we have a Friday club for children from in the church and outside the church, and we have a youth fellowship group. We have Messy Church that happens once a month, which is great fun, very messy. Um, we have knit and chat where uh, some of the ladies in the church and, and others come together and have a good chat while they're knitting. We have soup run that goes out fortnightly. It's part of the city centre soup run that takes soup to the homeless. Without the common fund, in effect, um, I wouldn't be able to be um, full time in the parish. But also there's lots of other ways that we're supported. We have a Christian union that runs in one of the local primary schools, for example. And so we can go and use the resource centre to resource that and to resource our messy church, which is great. So, so it enables us here to do what we do without support of other churches. We wouldn't be able to carry on running in the way that we do here and be able to do the activities that we do. We have lots of plans, um, a lot of things with building um, on the connections and relationships we already have. Um, we have connections with a few of the pubs locally, so building those connections and connecting into the community, finding ways to find out what the community need and how we can meet with them and share the gospel with them in meeting their needs, and also connecting more with the young people in the area and sharing the gospel with them. So there's a number of activities that we do within the church that's at specific times and we have a number of teams that, that put those on and a couple of the people involved in those are Debbie Cocaine Travis and Carl Chapman. We've been doing Chris Tingles at Polycops for a long, long time. Um, we all believe that it's a really worthwhile way to actually have the privilege of sharing the Christmas message with lots and lots of children. Um, I took over the job two years ago and it has become almost a military operation. Um, this year we had over a thousand children from the three local schools coming down and we also do our own Chris Tingle service on Christmas Eve as well. So we actually made as a church 1,200 Chris Tingles this year which um, was great fun. And we actually start our preparations round about November 
because if you can imagine how many sweeties on sticks that we actually need to prepare. Um, so if you're working on a thousand, that's 4,000 sticks with four sweeties on each. So we do need lots of help. And it's really a good time of fellowship as well for the people of Polycarps. Every year at Easter time, we bring the four local junior schools in and we walk them through Holy Week as an interactive uh, action together. And the children come in, the church is clear, we walk in through to Palm Sunday where they come in with palms and they're screaming and laughing and we dance and sing. And Jesus appears and walks his disciples through them. We take the children across to the uh, Last Supper where they give them a roast um, lamb meal with all the bits and trimmings. Uh, they go then to the Garden of Gethsemane where they see the video of Jesus being kissed by Judas. And then I take over as a Roman soldier and tell uh, the gruesome tale of the last day in the life of Jesus. And then uh, they, they come back together, there's two groups, one group in the church hall, doing activities which are fantastic, making Easter gardens and cards. And then the other group uh, do the activities here. Then we swap over and repeat the process. And then all, we all come back together for the last scene, which is the Easter scene, and we sing and we dance and, and we have a really good time. And Jesus appears, the risen Christ, from behind the walls of Jerusalem in a brand new costume, shining white. As Carl and Gina mentioned, the outreach here is made possible by the generosity of our brothers and sisters in other churches in the diocese. 2015 promises to be an exciting year for our diocese. As a result of many parishes' generous common fund pledges, the diocesan synod has been able to agree the first budget for many years which does not involve a cut in stipendary clergy numbers. With faithful generosity and continued growth in discipleship at parish level, it is hoped that we can not only sustain this, but even start to increase our clergy numbers. To support this pathway to growth, our new parish support team has already produced two user-friendly tools to help each parish plan its future development. These tools are freely downloadable from our New Look Diocesan website. Mission Action Planning enables your parish to review your strengths and weaknesses and to set a few achievable goals and strategies year on year in order to grow in both numbers and spiritual strength. Giving in Grace gives you materials to run your own Christian giving renewal programme and to renew it annually so that your discipleship and giving keep moving forward year on year. We have established a New Look Ministry training programme called St Peter's College, led by our new director, Dr Christine Gore. In September, all the bishops of the north of England will be bringing teams to our diocese for four days, with the aim of sowing the seed of the gospel in every area. Tom the Treasurer realised that common fund really goes a long way, and that we all benefit by acting together as an extended family. Before he slept that night, he first thanked God that this PCC realised it too and had been bold and venturesome in its common fund promise for the following year.